What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to Googleicious for everything Google that we could pack inside of a show each week. And we start the show off with the Nexus 5 rumor that started last week and is coming out to play again. The latest tweet from EvLeaks shows a full high-res version of the rumored white Nexus 5 on the backside with the expected black front, and it also mentions November 1st as the possible launch date. Now, previous rumors have targeted October 31st as the official launch date, but it looks like it's happening this week, and that's not a trick on Halloween, that's a treat. Now, in other Android news, the NVIDIA Shield Android handheld gaming device gets the Android 4.3 Jelly Bean update, but it brings a few new and powerful features. The big one is console mode, which allows you to plug the Shield directly into your TV via HDMI, and then you can use the Bluetooth gamepad as your controller. The update also adds support for thousands of Android games that allow you to map the touchscreen controls of games to the hardware controls with a button mapping app. Now, it's still a niche product at $300 that lacks the big blockbuster games, even if you can stream some from your PC, but I like the fact that Nvidia keeps pushing to add new features and content. Now, Samsung has said it's officially rolling out its own Android 4.3 Jelly Bean update that will let US phones like the Galaxy S4, S3, and Note 2 work with the new Galaxy Gear smartwatch that previously only paired with the Note 3. Now, this alleged grid of release dates shows Verizon will get first dibs with the S4 right away, and it will roll out through other carriers and phones all the way through December 2nd for the T-Mobile Note 2. And LG's G Flex phone is official after all the rumors over the past couple months. The 6-inch quad-core smartphone that features a curved touchscreen and rear control buttons will hit Korea in November, but U.S. pricing and availability remains unknown. Now, the screen's pixel density is a little disappointing for screen buffs at 244 pixels per inch, which isn't the end of the world. But its coolest feature, though, might be the G Flex's curved booty that sports an elastic, self-healing coating that LG says mends and protects the phone from day-to-day -day scuffs and scratches. You know, they should have just called this phone the Wolverine. That would have been much better. All right, let's switch gears and check out our app of the week. It used to be called Minitasker, but it's now called Condi. But let's see how it can help you out. I'm Dan Graziano, and I'm going to show you how to automate your Android device with an easy to use app called Minitasker. Unlike many of its competitors, the app is free in the Play Store for devices running Android 4.0 or higher. Minitasker is designed to automate different Android actions. Say you want music to start playing when you plug in your headphones. Or maybe you want the brightness to be turned down when your battery is low. All this and more can be set up in just a few steps. Open Minitasker and click on the plus icon. Select the launch an app option and choose the app you wish to use. For me, it's Pandora. Next, click on headset connected and choose which kind of headset you plan to use. One with a mic, without a mic, or any type. For automating the brightness, once again, click on the plus icon but this time select the screen brightness option and set it to your liking. After hitting OK, scroll to the bottom of the page and select low battery. Mini Tasker can also be used to silence a call from an unknown number, send a text message at a later time, and even change settings like Wi-Fi and Bluetooth at a specific time or place. All this can be done by clicking the plus icon, but be warned, setting up automated tasks based on your location may affect your battery life because your phone will constantly check your coordinates. You may have noticed the cloud icon next to the plus symbol. Clicking this will reveal a list of pre-written tasks that you can enable on your device. You can also share automated tasks that you've created with a long press and selecting the three dot symbol. All right, thanks for all that, Dan. And we'll wrap things up with two, what I call different stories surrounding Google. Now, CNET exclusively reported last week that Google has set up shop in the Bay Area and has been building a large structure made from shipping or cargo containers on a barge. Now, some evidence even suggests it might be a floating data center, and Google already has a patent for the concept. Now, the big Googs wouldn't comment, and the Portland Press Herald in Maine also ran a story recently with a structure that looks similar to the one being built in the San Francisco Bay. Now, they're also both owned by the same company. Now, other follow-up reports claims it's going to be a floating Google Glass store, but that makes no sense at all, so we'll just have to wait and see what Google is up to. And a new report from MIT Technology Review says data gathered from Google's self-driving cars shows that they're safer and smoother compared to when a human takes the wheel. The reports come from two studies of data from the hundreds of thousands of miles Google vehicles have logged in California and Nevada. Google has already been testing its cars on public roads since 2010. And to sum it up, 
driverless cars are already testing better than us. And contrary to popular stereotypes, I'm actually a very good driver. Yeah, no, no, so look, I know what gets you in the mood. I know how you like that sorbet and I put a little bit of those mint leaves on it. I know, yeah. Well, look, we put a little bit of that with some champagne on it. <laughs> Asian drivers. Anyways, baby, check this out. So, I All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at googleicious at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong, and we'll answer what we can. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching all the Google goodness this week, and we'll see you next time for another taste of Googleicious. Googleicious.